Mate, we talk on the phone. Yeah, that's all right. Yeah, cool, mate. No stress at all. We probably talk on the phone. That's even better. <laughs> <laughs> Well, uh, well, this this show is called Coffee Chats, but we can uh, we can make it Siggy Chats if you like. That's no worries, mate. <laughs> You're listening to Coffee Chats with Matt Collins. For more Coffee Chats interviews, make sure you subscribe to the Coffee Chats with Matt Collins podcast on iTunes or wherever you get your podcasts. Uh, well, mate, first of all, welcome to Coffee Chats. Thanks for doing this. No, thanks for having me. It's always a pleasure to uh, to uh, speak to uh, people and. Um and uh, yeah, talk about different things. Uh, that's one of the things I, I enjoy uh, very much. Fantastic, mate. As as do I. Now, look, um, I'm I'm a Queensland guy, so uh, so you know the the Collingwood um, passion we don't sort of get so much. So I'm I'm look I'm looking forward to finding out a bit about that tonight. And there's no one better to ask than you. Um, but. Uh, that's a nice <laughs> well, I've, uh, oh, gee, in my travels, uh, you come across, uh, you know, a lot of Collingwood people that are very, very, very passionate, and um, it's probably uh, even more outstanding when you consider that the last few years have been quite ordinary, you know. But the, yeah. the passion levels are still there, and that speaks volumes of the, the type of person that follows this football club. Well, mate, what, why don't we start there? So, uh, for, for those that don't know much about you, you're 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 the number one supporter of the Collingwood AFL team, the, the Magpies. Um, uh, at the, at that, that's that's other people. <laughs> that's, I would never classify myself as such. That other people have said that. Yeah. Um. There's uh. Yeah. There's a million people across Australia that back for Collingwood, and uh, we're all pretty much equal. But because I, I put on the gold jacket, people take a bit more notice. So that's the only difference. Uh, uh, in where I stand with my colleagues that follow this great football club. Got it. But I mean, you know, I've I've seen enough footage and I've spoken to enough people, and you know, some of my mates know you quite well. And 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 you don't mind leading the chants and you know being the face of of the fans. Would that be a fair thing to say? Oh, that'd be a fair thing to say. It's uh, you've got to be out there to do what I do, and um, <laughs> and. Uh, <laughs> and uh, uh, you take a bit of stick along the way, and, and you take some nice things along the way, like talking to good people such as yourself. How, how, how do Collingwood fans rate compared to other AFL teams? Well, I think Collingwood fans are very unique because there are some. Um, well, look, we're, we're hated, and we're not really sure why. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we are hated with a passion. As much as what we are loved with a passion, that that's the club and and the supporter. I think the Collingwood supporter. I, I, I think in a nutshell, um, the Collingwood supporter is very outspoken, uh, very much out there, very quick to defend his football club um, in people's faces when things are going quite well, and very very quick to defend uh, the football club at any time. Mm. So. I, I guess it's not a part-time thing being a Collingwood supporter. It's a it's a full-time thing. It's actually a way of life. Um, you know, if the team is going bad, and uh, you know, just about life is going bad, yeah. and when the, and when they're up and about, everything is uh, is quite nice. So look, it's it's a serious thing being a Collingwood supporter because people do come after you because you are Collingwood because people do hate us. Got it. Um, okay, can, I, can I can I jump in there, Joffa? Because yep. you know I, I I I get that, and I follow enough sport to know that you know Collingwood is is one of those yep. teams that you know you love to hate because they are so good. Um, but at the same time, do you think that Collingwood supporters like to rub that in? Uh, AKA wearing game over jerseys and bringing wooden spoons oh, to games. And- absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. Uh, oh yes. Uh, look, I, I think. Um, look, it's very interesting, isn't it? I, I, I think um, because we cop it so bad when things aren't going well, yeah. uh, we unleash more when things are going well. If that makes sense, like there's there's a lot of payback here. Mm. Um, 
Yeah, look, a lot of it is just pure passion and uh, and love for a football club that's winning and going well. But a lot of it's up yours. Um, we know you don't like us, but we don't care. Mm. You know, and it just seems to magnify. Um, look, it's uh, you'll find that most Collingwood supporters have been brought up into a Collingwood family. Um, and I think that a survey a few years ago uh, uh, yeah, says that, that, that most Collingwood uh, supporters uh, do come from a Collingwood family. So you're introduced at a very early age of this Collingwood football club and, and you see your parents um, yeah, support the club much the same as we do today. So um, it, it, it's very much... Uh, uh, a gene thing, uh, yeah, maybe. It. Kept it in the family. Yeah. Now, yeah. Y- you said there's one million Collingwood supporters. Well, look, I think there's more. I think there, there probably could be two million uh, easily right across Australia. Yeah. No matter where I go right across Australia, I bump into Collingwood people. No matter where I go, uh, all over Australia. Um and even down to Tasmania. I think we can include Tasmanians as a strange. <laughs> <laughs> and, 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 and when you run into one of these fans, like I'm, I'm assuming they would know who you are pretty quickly. Like, what sort of things do supporters say to you? <laughs> oh, they just, uh, look, it's, it's like, uh, look, uh, it's like uh, a family gathering when you travel across Australia and meet your fellow comrades. Um, there's an instant friendship there, and that is linked from the football club you follow. Mm-hmm. Um, and you might not get that with, with other clubs, but there's a, there's an instant mateship because you you follow this this awesome football club. Um, uh, I, don't, I don't know if that exists with other teams, but um, that's what it is when when you're Collingwood. You it's an extended family, not not just on match day at the MCG, but right across Australia. Mm. I read somewhere that um, someone was describing you and, and they used three words and I'm going to say those three words now. They were uh, a bogan, <laughs> a, a loud mouth yes. and a Collingwood hooligan. Oh, yes. Look, I'm not going to wear the first one, a bogan. I'm not a bogan. Uh, I, I strongly detest that because... Um, yeah, when, when people get to know me and, and, and the many and, and the things that I do in the community and the things I stand for, uh, I'm not a bogan. A loud mouth, yes, I am. Uh, absolutely. Mm. And what was the third one? A Collingwood? Collingwood hooligan. Oh, absolutely. And love. What a badge of honour. Thank you. <laughs> you'll, take that, you'll take that trophy, will you? Oh, absolutely. I'll take that to my grave. Thank you. <laughs> do, do you think... You have to mention my... They don't have to mention my name on the tombstone. They can just write, here lies a Collingwood hooligan. <laughs> That's right. All praise. <laughs> <laughs> do, do you think, Joffa, it takes someone like that to, to, to lead thousands and thousands of sporting fans, passionate sporting oh, fans? Oh, I think you've got to be very, very thick-skinned. I, re- I remember when all this first started uh, you know, 15, 17 years ago, and um, you know, social media was you know, was taking off at a big time, and you read some of the things that were the people were, you know, were saying about you on social media. And it was a pretty hard pill to swallow. Um, you know, uh, people that you don't even know. Like what, mate? Saying, what what sort of things were they saying? Well, just horrible, nasty things. You know, trolls. You know, and, yeah. and they're still with us. To, but you know, uh, the trolls don't upset me anymore because they they were. That they know they're wasting their time. Yeah. Um, and number number two, I, I know what sort of person I am. I know where I am in life. I know what I do and what I stand for. And you know, if, if people go bad mouthing me on social media, I, I, I just say say to myself, "Well, that person doesn't know me, so it doesn't bother me." Yeah. Um, but when you when you're first exposed to such uh, you know, vitriol and nastiness. Um, it does take a while to, to, to handle that and, and, and deal with it. Um, mm. But, uh, but uh, you know, it, uh, it's water off a duck's back these days. I, and like I said, I, I know what I'm about, and, uh, and to me that's the most important thing. Exactly. And, and in the early days when, you know, some of these trolls would, would start attacking you and, you know, writing whatever it is they were writing, like... Yep. Uh, where would you go with that? Would you retaliate or would you pull back or 
Well, what was I going mean, on? You, you, well, no, you wouldn't retaliate, but you, you, you try and um, you try and uh, you, you, you try and understand. Um, you try and get an understanding from that person. Why would you say that? Mm. You know, well, number one, it's untrue. Number two, you don't know me. What satisfaction are you getting from this? But see, that plays into the hands of a troll. See, mm. the worst thing you can do to a troll is to ignore him. Yeah, right. Or her. Um, uh, and when you do that, they know, don't go trying to bother this bloke because he's not going to give us a response. We're wasting our time. Mm. You know, so that's how you deal with a troll. Um, but, but these days, and for, for quite a long period of time now, I haven't been troubled much by by trolls. Um, you know, I, I think people know me now. They actually know the person away from the football stadium and the things that I do. And I, I think majority of them sort of think, oh, okay, well, he's a Collingwood hooligan, but he's actually not a bad bloke. Mm. You know, he, he, would, he would do you a good turn rather than a bad one. And these days, after a football game... I, I, I get photographed, uh, yeah, with opposition supporters more than what I do with Collingwood people. <laughs> so it's, it's quite a, it's quite an amazing thing, um, and it's very flattering. And I don't walk around town with my head up my ass. I I talk to all people, and because I love talking to people, and I have a I have a philosophy that um, yeah, you know, hate the club and love the people. Yeah. Yeah, you know, and I and I think that. Uh, um, yeah, 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 when you do that, people people can see it. They warm to it, and we're just all football nutters, you know, and we just all get on well. Yeah, well, well said, mate. Um, look, y- y- you touched on being the lovable guy, and that's from the small amounts that I've seen of you. That's that I would definitely agree with that. Um, why do you think you're so popular with obviously the the Collingwood fans, but the opposition fans as well? Um, yeah, that's a very good question, and sometimes I, I, I try and, um, yeah, sometimes we can overthink things, and that can be quite dangerous, but sometimes I've, I've tried to think about it. Look, I think, um, I think uh, there's a little bit of me in everyone, mm. you know, uh, and, and, um, and I, I, the heart is firmly entrenched on my sleeve, and uh, I, I'm quite happy to get up there and lead the wonderful slow Collingwood chant and wave the gold jacket around. And I think it, it, it also it also brings back memories to many many people of characters from the terraces of a long of a, of, a, of, a, of an era long gone. You know, mm-hmm. uh, I mean, what the football we, we the, the, they've uh, very successfully silenced the terraces. Um, it's all seated. Uh, there's no standing up. But when you sit down, you're not as vocal or as ferocious as what you are when you're standing up. And this is a proven. A proven study. I don't think I've ever seen you sit down at a game. Well, <laughs> but, but if you have a section of people standing up, that is the loudest section of the football Exactly. Uh, when you sit down, you become somewhat subdued. Um, look, I think, um, and I think people too realise that, uh, uh, and there are many characters in football, it's not just me, but I, I think people, the supporters appreciate that the game is also about them. Mm. You know, um, uh, if there was no supporters inside a stadium, it would be a pretty boring sort of game. So, um, look, I can't answer your question. I, mm. I, I don't know why it is, but but it is. Um, um, I'm sure. I'm sure you won a lot of fans with the uh, support for Carlton when they were going through some tough times. <laughs> yes. Well, now. The younger people of today have never seen rivalry like Collingwood and Carlton. Mm. We invent rivalries today to, to get to the games. <laughs> now, Carlton uh, look like coming good again. Collingwood are probably two or three good players away from being a top side. When Carlton and Collingwood get back into the top four together, these look out. supporters of today will not have seen a rivalry like this in all their lives, because this is fair income. Mm. The Carlton Collingwood rivalry is fair income. It's been here since day one because we played them in our first ever game at Victoria Park. Mm. Um, yeah, they've beaten us in a lot of grand finals. Um, yeah, there's a lot of dislike towards uh, each camp, the Carlton and Collingwood camp. 
and we're not far away from seeing that again, and that can only be good for football. See, a lot of people don't realise the Collingwood Football Club was, was born in a suburb at the time of unemployment, sickness, uh, homelessness. Yeah. Um, um, it, was a, it was a downtrodden suburb. It was laughed at. It was where all the, you know, the poor people of Melbourne live. Look at them there in Collingwood. They've got nothing. Mm. Um, um, and then this, this rich club, Carlton, you know, from the, uh, on the other side of town, uh, all the tops. Um, <laughs> all the tops. You know, You're showing you your know, age now, mate. Well, you got this rich establishment coming down to, to, to play this poor club, mm. and this poor club was a very, very good club, um, and, and, and that's and, and that's where I, I, I'm sure the hatred comes from. It's it's actually the rich versus the downtrodden, mm. um, and, and I think they still look at us as such, and we still look at them as the tops, got it. silver spoons, got it. They've been they've been uh, a bottom side for a long time now. Um, and if someone had said to you 30 years ago, Carlton would be down the bottom for so long, you would have been laughed at, because this, this was a very powerful club, yeah. the Carlton Football Club, and uh, as equal as what Collingwood was. Um, uh, but in recent years, Collingwood have probably had better times than what Carlton's had. So there's been a big separation between the two clubs on the ladder. But when that separation is gone and these, these two clubs get up the top together... Once again, it'll be on. Don't worry about that. Look out, exactly. Yeah, mate. Uh, you, you you said before an an, an era long gone. Um, that that's probably a good segue. I'd love to chat about uh, your you growing up. You know, early teens. Uh, you were still in Melbourne, weren't you? You grew up in in Victoria. Yeah, I grew up in Victoria. Well, actually, I've written a book about all that, and the book has been very successful. Um, look, I, I'll tell you my story about that. I, I was, um, I, ca- I come from a home of mental illness, um, uh, alcohol. My, my mother had severe mental illness problems. Uh, my father was an alcoholic. I was on the streets of Melbourne, homeless at 14. Um, Why? My mother was a, because was of a psycho. Well, there was a, it was a, it wasn't a family. It was a, it, the, the mother wasn't normal. Yeah. Um, dad was a drunk, um, and that's just a you know those two things combined is just a, a, a recipe for disaster. Mm. Um, and a, as a result of that, I was on the streets of fourteen. But uh, in my um, going back to five and six years of age, we were in, a, in and out of boys' homes because mum would have a a, a mental Ill, a, a mental illness uh, problem. She would be admitted to a psychiatric hospital. Uh, you know, Dad couldn't look after us, so we'd be made wards of the state, as it was called back then. Mm. Um, and, and this was uh, uh, this was happening on and off, uh, yeah, for quite a number of years. Well, uh, during one of these times in the Alambi Boys' Home, they had a recreation program where people from uh, the public would come in and take the boys out for a day. My God, you, you wouldn't hear of such a thing today. <laughs> um, but uh, they would come in and, and, and take uh, you know, one boy out for the day or two boys out for the day. In my case, it was me. And the people that came and got me uh, took me to Victoria Park. And I yeah. probably would have been about six years of age. Wow. Um, and, and I was uh, in the members' stand there at Victoria Park. And, you know, first time ever at the football, like the smell of hot dogs and liniment and surrounded by Collingwood people who were just absolutely... Feral, um, <laughs> yeah, and, 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 and the language, and, uh, and and I thought, my God, what is this? You know, yeah. I can remember as as, as clear as day, uh, seeing myself uh, you know, at that ground when I was six, and, and being surrounded by these people. So I think the Collingwood seed was certainly uh, born then. Mm. Uh, but on top of that, my mother was a Collingwood supporter, um, so I think it was always destined that I was going to to, to break for Collingwood. But because I didn't have uh, a normal family, um, uh, as other people would know, the Collingwood people became my family. Yeah, so I would go it. to Victoria Park every second Saturday and, you know, and uh, everyone was an uncle and everyone was an auntie. And there was, this, there was again, I say there was this great family uh, feel about following Collingwood. Got it. So uh, these... these uh 
people would, would, would get you from the boys' home and, and take you out for the day? Only the once did I go to Victoria Park with these people. Okay. Um, only the once. But uh, it, it was enough to, um, to to expose me to this... He planted a seed. What, what, yeah, wonderful castle of football and, and, and the supporters and... Uh, Peter McKenna and, and some bloke on the boundary line waving a white towel to try and get the crowd excited. I mean, <laughs> it, it, had, it had everything. Got it. And uh, how, how could you not follow Collingwood after that? After being exposed to that at such a young age. Exactly. Mate, you said, uh, you said your mum was a Collingwood fan? Yep. Did, did she ever, um, was she ever healthy enough to, to take you to a game? Oh, God, yes, but we, we would never come home with her. We would beat her to Victoria Park Station um, because um, after a loss, uh, she was a member of the famous Broly Brigade at Victoria Park. And what the Broly Brigade was is they would assault people with umbrellas. <laughs> um, they, they would be dressed up in the old Clark rubber raincoats from neck down to ankle and they'd have an umbrella under the arm and they'd be... They would be so incensed and offended about someone laughing at Collingwood getting beat, they would be attacked with an umbrella. Well, wow. you could imagine being kids, that was nowhere to be. Exactly. That was embarrassing. Was that just so women we were, or was it blokes as well? No, no just the women. No, yeah, just yeah. the women. Wow. Um, so we would, we would race up to, um, to Victoria Park Station and, and we would be praying for a train to come and get us before Mother got onto the station. Wow. <laughs> you can hear it like, coming up Lawley Street and, and, and nine times out of ten we would beat her home but it was a savage household after a Collingwood loss uh, mother didn't take terribly kind to Collingwood losing and uh, she would take that out on her siblings uh, uh, with not a meal but a cold bowl of soup yeah right that's what you would get how do you feel uh, about soup these days well I love soup these days, <laughs> not cold not cold soup <laughs> <laughs> oh dear me but you know uh, it is, and, and you know like there, there's wonderful characters back in the old Victoria Park days Matt the, mm. the characters that you saw uh, and the players loved the characters and the characters were you know were loved by the club and you know like but football was such a different thing back then it's all different now mm. yeah exactly what's what's the happiest memory with your mum well, not too many. In fact, I can't even think of one happy memory with Mum. She was um, she wasn't a very nice person. Um, no, there's, there's not one happy memory. I'm afraid to say, isn't mm. that terrible? What about your dad? You got one happy memory of your mother. But yeah, look, I, look, I'm old enough now to realise, and, and I and I and I've worked uh, many many years now with people with uh, you know all sorts of mental illness problems, and I'm old enough to understand that Mum wasn't well. Um, and that's that's the way it was. And um, yeah, when people are mentally unwell, they're not usually nice people. They're usually not nice people, you know. Mm. And and maybe they don't realise they're doing that. Well, of course they don't. Yeah, they, 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 they don't realise it at all. Maybe mm. mentally unwell. How could they? Exactly. And and what about dad, mate? Was that a similar situation, or was there some happier times with your old man? Well, no, not really. To be quite honest, Dad, Dad was uh, well, Dad was a bit of an alco. An alco. He was scared of Mum. Uh, he would do whatever she said. She ruled the roost. No, there's no. The, the Dad passed away a couple of years ago, and I um, uh, I didn't even go to his funeral. I, like I haven't seen him for years and years and years. I mean, and he wasn't a father, uh, to, uh, you know, in, in the true sense. Mm. Um, no, no, I, 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 no. There's no happy memories at all from from uh, mum or dad. Um, uh, look, uh, uh, it doesn't worry me. Look, it's the way it was. Um, uh, I'm quite happy with, with things today. Uh, luckily for me, uh, yeah, their brutality had no sort of d- direction on repercussions uh, on you. Yeah, on my life. I, in fact, I've, I've actually gone the other way. So. Mm. Um, yeah, that's the way it was, Matt, and there's nothing you can do about it. Yeah, got it, mate. Um, let, let's let's turn the page. And you mentioned the book before. I'd love to talk about uh, some of the some of the um, very very impressive stuff you've gotten up to. So you, you've written a book, 
And I mean, the, book, the, book, the, the book is called uh, Joffa Isn't That Life. Isn't That Life, yeah. So if anyone's listening to this, just Google it and it'll take you to the, uh, the publishers that are selling the book. The book has gone very well. We had a wonderful uh, book launch uh, and everyone that has read the book, there's nothing, the age had a big article on it with the Herald Sun. Just nothing but positive comments. So uh, before I started the book, I, I, I uh, told myself, this has got to be honest. Mm. It's got to be from the heart. And it's all about my life growing up following Collingwood till today. And uh, people have warmed to it. Um, why write the book, Joffa? Why write the book? Was it for you or was it... Um, that's very interesting. That's a good question. Yeah. I got a phone call out of the blue from this book publisher. And I wasn't too keen on it at first because it's only been the last couple of years I've been you know, keen to talk about my life. Because mm. um, you know, we've all got skeletons in the cupboard and, we, and, and, and uh, some things we find embarrassing. But you know, when you get to 55, Matt, nothing really embarrasses you anymore. <laughs> you know? Let it all hang out. Yeah, life is life. Uh, you know, there, there's, there's plenty of worse people off than me. So, look, I was invited to write a book. I wasn't too sure about it, to be quite honest. Mm. Um, Why not? But then um, what, what, what changed the whole thing was that this particular publisher of the book actually donates 10% of all sales to the, 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 a chosen charity from the author. Right. And I thought, that's fantastic. You right. know, I like that. Mm. So... And, 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 and people write books will tell you you don't make much money on books anyway. But to think that 10% is going to a charity, which I chose the Epilepsy Foundation because my daughter has epilepsy. Yeah. Um, I thought that was a wonderful, a wonderful thing and that's what spurred on the actual uh, decision to say yes to write the book. And, uh, and I'm glad I wrote the book now, to be quite honest. It was a very... Very uh, frank, very open, very honest book, and and um, a guy from the age likened it to a novel from um, uh, what's that guy? What's the author? Uh, Charles Dickens. Wow! Wow! Yeah, there I you know. go. Uh, yeah, I don't think so. <laughs> so. That's impressive. You're in you're in good company there, mate. In good company there. Look, yeah. it's a very very good book. So, and I can promise you now that, that if people you know, seek to buy the book, they won't be disappointed. Mm. Um, and, and again, our money goes to uh, to a really good uh, organisation caring for people with epilepsy. What did you learn from writing the book about yourself? Uh, you know what I learned, Matt? That I'm an okay person. Mm. I'm an okay person. I've, I've faced adversity of many times in my life and I've just been lucky enough to overcome every hurdle that's come my way. And I think that's because I've got a very healthy attitude on life and that is just live each day as it comes. Mm. Great philosophy. I wake up every morning now and I just give thanks that uh, I've got another day ahead of me because, uh, uh, you know, when you get to our when you get to our age, Matt, uh, we, we, we tend to go to a, to a lot more funerals of people that are about our age or younger. Yeah. So... Yeah, if, we, if we're doing well health-wise and, and mentally, we, we've got everything, uh, uh, Matt. So I'm, and I'm, I'm a, big, a big believer in that. I've never, I've just lived from one day at a time, mate. I think that's been my my saviour. It's a, it's a good philosophy. That attitude has been my saviour. Yeah, exactly. Now, uh, it seems like the logical progression after writing a book. You, the the logical thing is to then star in a in a leading role in a in a movie, right? <laughs> You're listening to Coffee Chats with Matt Collins. Matt, I know I'm Matt. Now my ego is well and truly <laughs> under check. Now, now, now. Tell us about I, the movie, Chopper. Mate, I know a lot of people out there who have got a, a huge public profile and their ego is the size of Mount Everest. <laughs> mate, my, my, I, I'm well balanced in that area and that's never going to happen. Yeah. Never going to happen. Um, no, no, I'm not. On the scale of being where I am compared to other people in life, Matt, I'm on the very bottom rung of the ladder. But, 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 but there is a movie about you. Well, there, Matt, there is. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I know. <laughs> yes, I know. <laughs> yes, you are very.
very good interview. I've actually done your homework. I'm trying to help you plug the movie here. <laughs> <laughs> Matt, it was the first, uh, it was the first um, independent movie made under $200,000 that made it to the cinemas. Yeah, nationally. So there's a bit of... Yeah, that's right. So mm. there's a bit of there's a bit of cinema history with this movie, but look, in hindsight, Matt, if we had to do it again, and and I had no say how the movie was was made, it was, mm. but uh, if if that was to happen again, there would be things in that movie that I would have said no to, and there would have been a lot of lot more things in the movie that I would have said yes to. Can you tell us the, some the, of the things you would have said well, no to? Well, the story the storyline of the movie is fantastic. I think all the, the narration parts I, I would have got rid of. I, I, I didn't think they were relevant. I think the movie could have been funny. It had a, a funnier. It could have a, a, had a great storyline. We had Father Bob McGuire, who's an absolute sensation. He was in it. Mm. Um, it could have been done a lot better. Uh, I, I, if someone was to ring tomorrow and say, hey, uh, Joff, we want to... And, and, and the guys weren't too interested in capturing the early life of... And I think that would have interested a lot of people. Yeah. If someone rang tomorrow and said, hey, we want to do a movie from your book, from, from word to word in your book, I would be wrapped because there's a message there to everybody. And, and that message I take to schools now. I, I do a lot of talkings at schools to kids who are, you know, 14, 15, 16 years of age. And the theme of the talk is decision-making and the subsequent consequences. Um, and, 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 and back when I was, uh, you know, homeless at 14, I was faced with that every day. Mm. So, and you only get one chance at life, Matt. You only get one chance. You make an error and it could stuff up the rest of your life. So, this, so, I, you know, I talk to kids about this at, at, at different schools and I uh, go to jails and, and, and talk to, you know, the two uh, troubled youth in jails. And, uh, so there is a good story in the book, um, that's um, great, and, and that story, that story in the book, I, 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 I think it, if it was done well into a movie format, I think it'd be very good. Yes, I mm. do. Got it. Uh, you mentioned Father Bob then, and he obviously he actually launched your book, didn't he? Yeah, him and Eddie McGuire helped launch the book, which was very good, and um, um, two great Collingwood men, and I, I, I bumped into. Uh, to Father Bob uh, about five weeks ago at um, the Melbourne Town Hall. We were at a function and he's as funny as ever. <laughs> he is a funny he's bloke. A, he's just a real good bloke. Yeah, he, absolutely. He Same as Eddie McGuire, he's a good bloke as well. How did you meet Father Bob? How did you first meet him? Well, through the movie. Uh huh. Through the movie. Yeah. Wow. Uh, we, 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 we had to go down and ask him would he like to be in this movie that we've got planned and uh, he had made troubles in saying uh, yes and he was very good. Yeah. You, you did some work in his at the church. That's right. Some he labouring. told him off and he told <laughs> us off and he, he kicked us out of his church and uh, funny stuff, you know. But, exactly. Uh, yeah, if, we were, if we were to work on that today, it could have been even funnier. It was rushed, Matt. I, I think the problem with the movie was, Matt, it was rushed. Mm. I mean... Uh, and these guys had limited funds, so it had to be done quickly. But it took us to Scotland. Exactly. It took us. It took us to London. Uh, the Celtic Football Club were very good to us. They were outstanding. Um, look, uh, maybe I'm a bit critical of the movie, Matt, but um, uh, I thought it could be done better, mate. Yeah. Got it. Um, yeah. And at the end of the day, there's not many people that can say they've got a a, a movie. Uh, well, absolutely. About them, absolutely. Right? But it would have been nicer if it had been a little bit better. You know what I mean? Mm. Yeah. Well, you know, there's always time. Absolutely. You never know what's around the corner, yeah. mate. You never know. Yep. If you could describe Eddie Maguire in one sentence, what would you say? Fabulous bloke. Fabulous bloke. Eddie Maguire could walk into a room full of unknowns and talk to him like he's known him for 10 years. Mm. That's sort of like Eddie Maguire is. Very proud Collingwood. Staunch Collingwood man. Come from the other side of town. You know, he's a, he's a, you know, he's made it, he's rich, he lives in Turak, but he's still a very good bloke, absolutely. Mm. And, 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 and always, and, and always Collingwood number one in his heart, absolutely. Exactly, and, and highly professional too, from what I've been told. Oh, mate, he'll take the footy show back to number one, I'm telling you now. <laughs> You've only got to beat the NRL. Well, I think, Matt, the ratings, that footy show was pretty close to be axed. Yeah, okay. 
He was on, he was on the nose with a lot of people. Yeah. He's come back down now. He, he will take that footy show back to number one. I'm telling you now, Matt. Yeah. That's the professional that he is. Yeah. He's very good at his caper. And, um, and, uh, yeah, he's very successful. And, um, you know, there's a lot to like about him, Matt. Absolutely. I, uh, I, I heard a story and you never know if these things are true, but he used to do his radio show. Um, and obviously it's radio, much like what we're doing tonight. No one can see us, but he would turn up in the full suit and tie at 5 a.m. Oh, every morning. Yes, yes, absolutely. I, I've, I've, I've been in, in the studio at Triple M uh, a couple of times over the years, uh, uh, I think talking about epilepsy and, and different things, and there's Eddie at uh, you know, 10 past 6, uh, the times that I was in there and he'd be in his suit. Mm. Um, and I think there was there was some reason why he gave. He said, "You never know what's around the corner." Yeah, that was that was his reason for being in a seat. <laughs> um, yes, yeah, so you never know what's around the corner. So that's interesting. But uh, I, I couldn't do that. I couldn't wear a seat twenty four seven to rip the bloody thing off. Mate, you got the gold jacket. That's close enough. Absolutely, yeah. That's a lovely thing to have. Yeah, I know you've told that story ten million times, but can you tell it one more time? Um, how how did it end up that Eddie Maguire got you the golden jacket? Well, now we talked about the footy show. Yeah. Uh, uh, back in the day, I didn't watch the footy show that much because I was doing shift work. But this particular Thursday night, I was watching the footy show. Uh, Eddie appeared. Uh, this would have been about two thousand and one. Malthouse was on the scene. Shaw had gone. Bad times under Tony Shaw. With Malthouse, um, there, we could see a bit of light at the end of the tunnel. Um, Eddie wore his gold jacket. In a, it, it was an in-house commercial thing. It went for 20 seconds. Mm. I think it was advertising some sporting bet thing. I, I'm not sure. Anyway, mm. and it caught my eye. And uh, I was in touch with Eddie McGuire at that time. And um, I emailed him and said, mate, that gold jacket, that'd be fantastic to celebrate Collingwood victories <laughs> um, in, in the cheer squad. And uh, I hear great, yeah, being as passionate, yeah. Eddie being as passionate as what he is, agreed. Look, he even, uh, he knocked it off from the Channel 9 wardrobe. It was worn by Bernard King, Bert <laughs> Newton, uh, the circus Blake of a uh, long time ago. I just forget his name now. Um, he had a dry clean, knocked it off, had a dry clean. I met him at Victoria Park the following Tuesday. Tuesday night, um, it might have been the following Thursday, and um, it was in the dry cleaners package, you know, of the you know the, the plastic uh, covering, and um, uh, but that that particular jacket now has been framed because it was there's a lot of history with that jacket, not just because of me, but he used to wore it before me, so that jacket's been framed, mm. and that's now hanging at the. Um, at the museum thing there at the Holden Centre, which yeah. is very touching. That's great. So every year, every year, Matt, we have a different gold jacket, and each year we we um, we sell it off to charity, um, uh, the Epilepsy Foundation, White Lion Youth for Justice got it one year, and and some years we just give it away to a kid. Uh, yeah, mate, this is yours, keep it, and we get another one made for the following year. Fantastic. Um, so uh, the, the, the 2010 Premiership jacket. Uh, we sold for charity for the Epilepsy Foundation for just under five thousand dollars. Yeah, that's 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 uh, awesome. Yeah, awesome. Uh, last year it went to uh, uh, nineteen hundred dollars for White Lion Youth in Crisis, and just this year, mate, down in Launceston, I went to a function in Launceston about three weeks ago, and um, it was a charity event also. And uh, we we chucked a gold jacket on the table. This year's gold jacket because there's only you know, four or five games to go, and they they auctioned it for seventeen hundred dollars, which which went to the epilepsy people of Hobart, which is fantastic. Wow, that's great. Now it ha- it has the, gold the ep- jacket isn't about me. So Matt, the gold jacket isn't really. It's it's not about me. It's about community. It's about the kids at Collingwood. Uh, but it certainly made a, a bit of a name for itself. No one else can do it now because you would just be frowned upon as a copycat. <laughs> that's right. As another supporter of another club brought out a gold jacket. Yeah. Um, so I think that's really touching when you sort of think, well, gee, you know, 50, 60 years' time, someone's going to come across a picture of this lunatic in the gold jacket and, 
you know, someone might have memories of meeting this bloke in the gold jacket. Yeah, so it's really... It's where it all started. It's been quite an honour, yeah. That's great, mate. Do, do you sometimes have to pinch yourself and, and like, you know, stuff like that? And, and as you say, no, that, that, that'll no, go no, down my in ego, history. No, my ego's not that big. No. <laughs> no, mate, I've got the same worries and concerns in life that everyone else has got. Yeah. You know, I've I got, I got a, a lovely daughter with epilepsy. I've got four grandchildren. I'm working. You know, in 15 years' time, I'll probably be looking at retirement. Um, you know, I, I've got the same worries and concerns as everyone. I, I'm no different to, to anyone else, and I think that's why these things work. Yeah. And I, I, I would never, ever pinch myself to, to sort of ask, has this really happened? Because I'm the same as anyone else, Matt. I, 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 seriously, that's the way I look at this thing. I, I'm no different to anyone. Um, Got it. But, know, but, I, but at, know, the, at the same time, though, like surely you, you, you must be grateful for this journey you've been on. And I'm oh, go- yes. Uh-huh. Grateful that I've done it well. Mm. Grateful, that I've, grateful that I've given so much back because I would be dead set embarrassed if this thing was all about me. Mm. I would be embarrassed. So um, um, I deliberately turned that around not to make that the case um, and bring in charities, bring in the kids of Collingwood. Um, you know, when I go to functions, I take the gold jacket. It's been to funerals. It's been to hen's nights. It's, this thing's been everywhere. It's, uh, <laughs> um, and it's only been the one hen's night. I'll never go back to another. Um, so, Surprise, look, you're still look, alive, mate. Yeah, look, it's been a wonderful journey. And, and I think that's because people can see that uh, the person on that journey has been honest. Mm. Um, it would do you a good turn rather than a bad turn. Um, and it's all about fun. And I think that's what we've got to remember. It's just been all about fun. That, that's great. Now, you, you, you touched on the charities there. I'd love to, um, I'd love to talk about some of the work that you do. Um, now, obviously, the Epilepsy Foundation, you, you put a lot of time and, 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 and effort into there. But um, tell us about some of the other charities that you're a part of. Oh, well, um, another charity that I love uh, doing ambassadorial work for, if there is such a word, is RecLink. Now, RecLink mm. is an organisation throughout Australia that bring uh, disadvantaged people together in sport. Um, and they have their, they have their grand final days coming up in a couple of weeks time down at the peanut farm in St Kilda. And these are people that have, um, have done it tough, doing it rough, homeless, um, uh, physical disability, maybe an intellectual disability. And they play sport all year. And in August, September, they have their grand final days. And I go down there to support them on those days. And it's a wonderful day, mm. and Reckling do it so well. Um, That's with Peter I'm Cullen, sure. yeah? Sorry? Is that with Peter Cullen as well? He Yes, absolutely. That's him. Yeah, you know him. <laughs> yeah, we're supposed to have a coffee chat one night, but uh, similar to our issues tonight, he, he, we couldn't get the technology right, so we've had to postpone, but I'm looking forward to that one. Oh, wonderful man. I'm, I'm so glad to hear that you're going to speak to him. Mm. Look, he was... Um, he was, uh, he's featured in Joffa the movie as well somewhere, Peter. Absolutely he is. And he's wow. also in the book. There's a chapter in the book that I wrote dedicated to RecLink. Okay. Um, and it tells you, you know, some of the great things that they do. So, um, White Lion Youth in Crisis, I, I do a lot of stuff for them and I, I think it's important that we, that we try and guide and direct their, our youth of today onto better things because they're doing it tough. I mean, the ice drug and, mobile phones and social media mm. uh, and, the, and, and, and and just other pressures uh, that come along in their life. They're, they're doing a lot tougher than what we did when we were young and um, um, and some of them are paying the price. There's, there's so much uh, you know, mental illness uh, with our young people today. It's in, you know, it's, it's getting higher. The, they're under so much pressure. So I, I, I like spending time with them. Um, yeah, with the with the younger folk, I coach junior football, and and that's very re- rewarding because you can teach the young kids, um, you know, junior football that the football is life, and life is football. They're uh, very much uh, the same thing. Mm. Uh, but that that's a very in depth conversation there. So I'll, I'll just put a full stop <laughs> that's there. That's right. Um, that, that's another time, mate. Um, right? Tell yeah, us, tell uh, us about the up. tell us about the Anchorage Hostel that you you, you do uh, do some work at. Oh yeah, well that's probably 
just down there in Anchorage. We, we've all moved on to a new place in Footscray, Foley House. Look, the Anchorage Hostel was a lovely place. It was a Salvation Army hostel. Um, it was uh, it was a rough place because we had some pretty rough people stay there, Matt. Mm. Um, at times it, it was dangerous. But, it, you know, Matt, it worked because the staff there... Um, uh, got behind and, and pushed this community thing within the anchorage, and um, and the guys loved it. It was um, yeah, the anchorage was struggling financially. Um, uh, the furniture was all sort of you know uh, hand me downs and, mm. and sort of second hand. And look, it was just a wonderful place, uh, Matt. But but um, that sort of hostel. In the in the time that we're in now, is very much outdated, and the Salvation Army had to move on from that. And we're in a in a place now in Footscray, which is uh, you know one hundred times better in all okay. areas of uh, community living. That's uh, great, mate. But, uh, t- tell me though, t- 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 tell me in regards to that, um, you're. Am I right in saying that you will get there, say ten, eleven o'clock at night, and, and work through till the next morning? Oh, yes, I th- uh, yes, 10.30, 11 o'clock till 8.30 in the morning, and my role is uh, after-hours support worker, um, and I've been doing that for a long time now. Wonderful job, wonderful job, Matt. We, we, we look after the guys, we feed them, we sit down and talk to them. Uh, we break up the little squabbles that happen every now and then. Yeah. Uh, but but uh, um, these days, it's... Um, it's, it's a lot more calm than what the Anchorage was, yeah. Mm. The guys the guys we're basically uh, dealing with that are guys that have experienced homelessness sometime, uh, somewhere along the journey. Mm. Um, they've also battling mental health illness, drug and alcohol dependency problems. Um, so, uh, look, terrific people. They've all had a life at, at, at some stage. They're yeah, just... Uh, it's just victims of circumstances, most of them. But I don't think they'd see me as an, an inspiration because that, that um, no, I don't think that'd be the right word. I think the younger person does, um, uh, but not the older person. No, I don't think so. What's What's the goal then uh, for you and the other support team there for these guys that that come and stay at the hostel? To treat them like human beings to even actually love them. A lot of these people have never had a good word said to them all their lives. They've had the, the finger pointed at them. They've been they've been abused. They've been punched up. You know, they've been laughed at, put on the scrap heap. So we make it our mission to uh, to welcome these people with, and I mean it, with open arms mm. and uh, friends and uh, always willing to sit down and have a coffee and listen to them. Just basically treat them like a human being. Fantastic. And and do you notice response from them? Um, absolutely. When you yes, when absolutely. you do treat people like that. Absolutely, Matt. If you mm. um, if you treat people like that, you get the best out of people. Mm. Yes. Exactly. That's and great. That, that, that's not a revelation, Matt. That's no. not a revelation. No, of course not. But sadly. Yeah. Uh, yeah, what we know versus well, what sadly, we actually sadly, do. Today, sadly, sadly, we, we, we're all very judgmental, Matt, and we, mm. we, and we, we, and we, we judge people on sight and hearsay, mm. which is very unfair, and we're all guilty of it, even, even I'm guilty of it, although mm. I've, I've probably uh, managed to turn that around because I think that if you, if you, when you talk to someone, walk away searching for, say, five good things about that person, from that meeting you've had, instead mm. of walking away trying to find five bad things about that person. And, and dwelling on the bad thing. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, absolutely. Exactly. Yes, of course. Uh, now, another charity, and there's so many that you uh, that you are involved in, but but another charity that I've... Uh, he's a mutual friend of ours, Michael Gallus, with the uh, Footies for All yeah. Foundation. Yeah. Um, I've I've done a coffee chat with 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 Mike, really nice bloke. Um, what, what's your involvement with Footies for All? Uh, well, I, I just uh, if, if Mick needs something, I, I'm I'm quite prepared to um, 
to um, do stuff with Mick. Mm. Uh, we've been to schools and given away footballs. Uh, we've been to Port Phillip Jail. We've played soccer with the uh, with the uh, guys at Port Phillip. We've played cricket. Mm. Uh, oh, we've had wonderful times with uh, with Mick and. Um, what he does is amazing stuff, and he's a, he's a good bloke, but he barracks for Carl. <laughs> he's one of those toffs. <laughs> he's one of those toffs. He's one of those bloody Carl toffs. But, but, a, but a good bloke and does a lot of good things. And I, I, I've had a very, very enjoyable time doing stuff um, with Mick and Footies for All. Yeah, and uh, most recently he was the coach of the women's Pakistani AFL team, which is uh, quite a unique... Yeah. Uh, yeah. experience I'm sure yeah and he broke his shoulder I think he broke his shoulder or he you know, they did some damage there. some bloke laid him out playing in the rec league game wasn't it yeah, yeah play, yes that's right playing a rec league game yeah. he, got, he got hammered and uh, he invited <laughs> me to come along to that game but I have I had another uh, function to go to so I uh-huh. said no I can't I've got something else on uh, and I'm rather glad that lucky you didn't <laughs> <laughs> you're in the same state as him yeah. Mate, uh, speaking of wishing you were 20 again, um, uh, what would a 20-year-old Joffa be like in, in uh, this day and age? Oh, gee, that's a very good question. Probably, probably, he would probably end up a lot wealthy. <laughs> 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 uh, look, look, I, look, that's, uh, that's, uh, look, that, that is a very, that's a very good question. Look, um, if you knew what you knew now, and and you and you had youth on your side, what sort of things would you yeah. do differently? Oh, mate, I would have uh, gone gone all out to to do stuff with, with the homeless people. Yeah, um, I would have done a lot of good things. Um, uh, you gee, that's a very good. Question. <laughs> I'm actually I'm actually struggling to answer that. Look, that, that that's very good. Look, and and and. You can ask that question to everyone and, and, and that sort of thing. Well, if I knew what I knew now back then, mm. um, you know, a lot of, a lot of better things would have happened for sure, mm. you know, but look, that's the way it is. I, I, I don't think I would, um, um, I don't think I would want to change anything about my life because, uh, man, I'm a great believer. It is what it is. And, um, yeah, you know, we're all dealt, uh, yeah, cards in our life, and we've just got to play the deal as best as we can. Yeah, and you know, don't, uh, don't you believe that? Oh, you know, mate, a hundred percent. You know, and I, I think about my fourteen-year-old son when you know when I'm thinking about these sort of questions and uh, the mistakes that I've made. I kind of go, well, you know what? If if I didn't make those mistakes, I wouldn't have learned from them. So. I yeah. think I think you have to uh, go through the hard times to then go. Yeah. I've learned from yeah, that. Like, uh, and, 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 and treat him with love, but be firm of discipline, Matt. Mm. Absolutely, and that's what I. Uh, I'm a big believer in discipline, not over the top, but put your arms around. And to anyone that's listening to this, put your arms around your kids and tell them you love them forever. But be very firm of discipline. Absolutely. Mm. Mm. Got it. Do you sometimes wish that you weren't Joffa the character? Oh God, oh, mate! I, I just want to go down the street one day and <laughs> <laughs> not talk football. Yeah, uh, because look, I uh, look, I, I under, look. I talk to if anyone comes up and says hello to me, you can't walk away. You can't be rude. Mm. Uh, you've got to talk to these people that are nice enough to come up and say hello to you. Mm. you know, people will, will ask you all sorts of questions about football and um, and it's just common decency to just stand there and you have a conversation with these people. Mm. Um, but I think that uh, there are times when I, yeah, I just think, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, I can just imagine like some days, you know, you, MCG holds 100,000 plus people yeah. and and here you are in front of thousands and thousands of them screaming your lungs out screaming the yeah. collingwood song and, and i won't yeah. get you to sing it tonight um you know and is there days where you go you know what i don't want to do this today oh absolutely yes there are days i just want to sit down there with the the transistor plugged into my ears just listen to the game uh just observe the game enjoy it 
Um, oh, there are many times, Matt, and I, and I think that that's, um, as I've got a little bit older, I think I'm starting to feel like that more and more. Look, I don't mind... I don't mind the football so much because I, I, I kind of created that environment for myself, you know. I, mm. But down, but, but when you're sort of down the street doing your own thing and you might be out with the, you know, uh, the grandkids somewhere, you just think, oh, no, please, please. <laughs> 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 you know, but like I said, Matt, my ego is well and truly in check and uh, I'm all about other people. And, uh, yeah, being decent to other people and being polite. Um, and, uh, that's, that's the way it should be. And that's the way I am. Absolutely. What's, what's been the most memorable time that, uh, someone's come up to you and, and, and recognized you? What's been the most memorable experience you've had? I think in London was the most incredible experience of coming, someone coming up saying, are you Joffa? Wow. Yeah, that was, so I, I, I was actually, because I know now wherever I go, I'm going to get recognized. So it's, it's not, it's not a startling revelation anymore. It's not, you know, uh, but to be recognized overseas is just, a, that's, <laughs> that just absolutely floored me. Yeah. Um, look, I think, um, the, 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 the most precious memory I have of being who I am was, um, was being, with the many kids that have passed away with different illnesses over time that I've gone to visit, put the gold jacket on them, take a picture, you know, with them and the parents and, mm. you know, surely down the track that the, you know, the, the kids have passed on. I think that's been the most touching thing for me. You know, there's been uh, quite a few of those cases in the past and, um, gee whiz, it, um, you know, you put a smile on a, you know, on a, on a, on a, you know, a young person's face, he's terminally ill, and you just think, wow, you know, this is fantastic. Mm. You know? But not, uh, it's an enjoyable experience for me because, you know, the, you, you put a smile on this kid's face, uh, you know, and it's so innocent and it's so honest, and, you know, it's just, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's great. It's, um, it, 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 there's been a lot of great things like that, that that's happened, um, yeah, but I, I, I just get as, uh, you know, when, when I speak to a, a person that's 95, 96 years old and they just want to talk Collingwood and they want to talk the gold check and you sort of think, wow, this thing really has impacted <laughs> on people's lives, you know. Exactly. Um, so I just think, look, I just think I'm lucky. I just think it's been good management, Matt. I just think it's been because I, I, I've got I've got no ego to talk about. Uh, I'm a, uh, I'll talk to all people, um, and that's that's what I believe in. That. So I, I, look, that's why it's probably worked. Mm. Yeah, I'm, I'm starting to get that picture as well. You know, it's and it, and it goes beyond. Um, uh, it, it goes beyond a ball, and you know some. Absolutely. Oh yes, it does. Absolutely. It? Yes. Yes. Mm, there's so much more to it than just yes. the actual yes. sport. And and perhaps that's what it is for so many people that come up to you as well. You know, sure, it's they, they love their team and everything else, but it's what the team brings, it's what the sport brings, it's what you bring to it that, that actually does uh, improve the quality of their lives. Yeah, and, it's still, and that's still something that I, I, you know, and when you talk about this with another person such as yourself, it, it's hard to get your head around this. I mean, it's, mm. uh, yeah, look, it's, 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 it's really, it's, uh, yeah, no, mate, these are fantastic. I've never been asked these questions before. So, <laughs> but, but the questions that you've asked, I, I've often thought about, you know. Yeah. Um, you know, because how lucky are we? we? We've got our health, we've got a job, we've got a car. Well, we live in Australia. I think that's straight away pretty luckier than, than most people out there. Oh, absolutely. So, you know, um, and that's all it is, Matt. It's just like it's nothing else. Mm. Yeah, no, well said, mate. Uh, what's, what's the, what's Joffa's plans for the next five to ten years? Oh, God. <laughs> is there, is there a big, is there a big box you want to tick off? No. No, no, look, no, no. Look, when the football ends for Collingwood on Saturday, I'll be looking forward to a really good rest. <laughs> I bet. Rest uh, the lungs. 
So I, I'm not one of those people that miss football over summer. I can tell you now, I love mm. it. But, but when it comes back, I love it as equally. What do you do um, in, the, in the off season? What do you do? Oh, I do nothing. I, I, I basically do nothing. I, I, <laughs> I work, as, as you know. I, I follow the EPL, yep. the English Premier League. West Ham. I, I, uh, West Ham. The Hammers. Yeah, poor old Hammers. Mate. <laughs> uh, look, they, they, they kicked two goals with 10 men last weekend. It's only the second game in. I think things are going to be okay. They're just slow starting, slow starters this year, but I'm hoping things are going to be okay. I quite often go see a Melbourne City game at, uh, yeah, here okay. in Melbourne. What about the Stormers? You ever get out to the Stormers? Yeah, I do. I did, I did a thing for Melbourne Storm about four weeks ago, and they'll probably win the Premiership this year, fingers crossed. They look good. Because it is a very, very good football club, and, and they deserve, uh, they deserve a Premiership. So good luck to Melbourne Storm. They're so uh, good, they're boring, is, is my opinion of Melbourne Storm. Yeah. They're, they're yeah, so and good, and it's just clinical. Norms, don't they? Exactly. Do do you do you find there's a a clash between AFL and NRL in Victoria, or is it really NRL doesn't have much of a a following compared to yeah, AFL? Well, Melbourne Storm, they they get some good crowds to their grounds down uh, to the you know, the um, the stadium down here. I think a- sometimes twenty thousand yeah. people. Well, that's amazing. Look, football is number one down here, mm. but Melbourne Storm get a fair bit of publicity. Don't worry about that. Mm. I think because they are so good, that obviously helps too, right? And I think, and I think that a lot of people saw, you know, uh, the unjust of taking those flags off Melbourne Storm. Um, I think people down here saw that as the people up north just unleashing because we were a southern state. Mm. Because other rugby clubs have been played up, have played up as well. Um, as far as we can see, but the, the, the penalty hasn't been as harsh. Mm. But they really got stuck in the Melbourne Storm. I think that won Melbourne Storm a lot of friends down here, Matt. Yeah, got it. When you go to an NRL game, mm. is it this? Is it a similar experience for you? Like, are, are, are oh, you, oh, yes, does everyone know who you are there? <laughs> absolutely. Do you wear the uh, gold jacket there, or? No, no, no. no. <laughs> you I, I, you I, give I, it a rest. I, I keep the gold jacket for um, the Collingwood games. I don't wear it to soccer games. I don't take it to NRL. But at the NRL, <laughs> people come up and say, "Oh, it's fantastic to see you here, Barrington for Melbourne Storm." And yeah. you know, it's just uh, uh, rugby people are great people. You know, that sporting people are good people, um, and they're very. And you'll find that they're very caring people. Um, it's a very strong community, the sporting community. I, I think it's wonderful. Mm, yeah, agreed. Melbourne is uh, the sporting capital of uh, of the country, really, isn't it? Oh, absolutely. Look, it is, and uh, it's something that's always been with us. And uh, you know, everyone down here is crazy about one sport or another. Um, but you know, you guys up there, uh, you know, you can um, at the stadium there in Sydney, you can sell that out and. Mm. With rugby and uh, yeah, rugby's a very good game. I mean, I mean, just because it's a it's a northern game, uh, yeah, um, doesn't mean that we hate we hate it. I I think rugby's a wonderful game. I I prefer rugby union more though. I think rugby union's a, a better game. Yeah. Okay. It's interesting. I I watched something recently saying that union is really struggling in regards to getting. You know, grassroots and the kids it to come is, through. I know. Yes, why is that? Oh, uh, I th- I think that uh, there's a lot more advertising sponsorships and whatnot in yeah. your in your rugby league in your AFL. I think soccer's had a really good growth spurt over the last five years or more with oh, with uh, Frank true. Lowy and you know. But isn't rugby union the game they play in heaven? Apparently, but I've never been to heaven, mate, so I don't know. And I'm not sure that I'm headed that way, to be quite honest. And we're not too keen to get their teeth are we? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> mate, um, first of all, thanks for tonight. It's been a wonderful chat and it's, uh, yeah. you know, we've, we've gone well over the hour, so I want to say thanks and I appreciate your time. Um, no worries. It's a great pleasure for, for me, Matt, um, to, to speak to, well, I'm honoured that, you know, that, that someone from Queensland wanted to have a chat with me, so thank you. Um, and you, you asked some terrific questions and you sound a, a ripper of a bloke that loves his sport. 
Um, so I wish you all the best too. Uh, Dig what you're doing is wonderful. Thanks, mate. Very much appreciate it. It's been great to talk to you. Now, make sure you get my book, all right? Then make sure your listeners, uh, Joffa isn't that life because 10% of this book goes to epilepsy. So I, I, I want to see some sales there go to Queensland. Most definitely. Um, uh, what's the best way, what's the best website to go to, Joffa? Oh, um, a Busy Bird, uh, publication, Busy Bird. Yeah, just type in Busy Bird. I think it's publications, Busy Bird. Yeah, look, they're, they're the, the Busy Bird publishers or publishing or something. Got it. Busy Bird, B-U-S-Y, B-I-R-D. Got it. So and just, it, yeah, just Google that. And when you get to the website, you'll see my book on the, I'm on the pages there and just order it through that website. And, and if you did, mate, I, I, I know you'll love it. And I, I'll expect a text message somewhere down the track saying, John, you are right, mate. It's a great book. <laughs> Most definitely. I, I obviously did a bit of research the last few days leading up to this chat. And, uh, mate, I watched some fantastic YouTube clips. I must say, I laughed out loud with the, uh, Joffa and Sam Newman. Evening, where you're watching uh, the, you're the not, footy. I want, I want to let you know a little secret, man. I don't watch myself on TV. Oh, really? You should. You're very I, funny. <laughs> I never saw that. I never saw the. I don't. I very rarely see anything of me on TV. I can't stand my voice, and I can't stand the way I look. I just cringe with embar- embarrassment. <laughs> so I don't watch any of that stuff. Um, but uh, I'm glad to hear that you found that it was funny because a lot of other people have said that. So mm. that's good. So thank you for saying that. No, mate, my, my pleasure. And look, on behalf of the thousands and thousands and actually uh, one million um, Collingwood supporters, <laughs> thanks, uh, mate, thanks for what you do too. And, you know, I'm sure, I'm sure, actually I'll finish with this. In, in a hundred years' time and someone mentions your name, what what sort of things would you like them to say? Um, I like him to say he was a Collingwood hooligan. <laughs> he was not a bogan. He was a, good, he was a good bloke. I think. I think in in in, in Aussie speech, being labelled a good bloke, I don't think you should aim any any higher than that. Yeah. I, I think. I think in 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 Australia, being labelled a good bloke, I I think that if you can if you can if you can get people saying that, I think you've done your job. Agreed, mate. And Joffa, I definitely concur. You are a, a fantastic bloke. Well, thanks very much, mate. And uh, all the best with this interview and all the best with the interview with Father. Now, hang on. No, Peter Cullen. Peter, Peter Cullen, yep. I'll... You want to try and see our Father Bob McGuire, mate? He'd be hilarious. I'll, I'll, I'll definitely, uh, if you don't mind, I'll drop your name too, Joffa. Absolutely. Please do. Fantastic. Thanks again, mate. Right. Okay, no worries. Good all on, the best. Coffee Chats with Matt Collins. For more Coffee Chats interviews, make sure you subscribe to the Coffee Chats with Matt Collins podcast on iTunes or wherever you get your podcasts.